Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In today's video, we shall discuss about zymogens. Zymogens are inactive precursors of active enzymes. Because they are precursor molecules, they are considered as proenzymes. Zymogens are activated only when necessary at their specific site of action. So the activation process happens only in presence of their activators. So during the activation process, there is structural changes happening on the zymogens. And this activation process is irreversible and it's also considered as irreversible covalent modification of enzymes. So we have zymogens. So we have zymogens which are inactive enzymes and they are converted to active enzymes at the site of action in presence of activators. This activation happens only at specific sites only when there is requirement of active enzyme. And this activation process is irreversible. It can only work in this direction. So next, let's see which enzymes are produced as enzymogens. We know there are several thousands of enzymes in the body, but only few are produced as zymogens. Let's see which are they. Some of the protein digesting enzymes of the gastrointestinal tract are produced as zymogens. We know pepsinogen is produced by the chief cells in the stomach. They are synthesized and stored as zymogen, that is pepsinogen form. Once the pepsinogen is released into the lumen of the stomach, it gets activated to its active form called pepsin. We have trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, proelastase, procarboxypeptidase A, procarboxypeptidase B. These are all enzymes or zymogens produced in the pancreatic acina cells. They are synthesized and stored in the pancreas in their zymogen forms. Once they reach the duodenum in presence of food, they get activated to their active enzyme form. We also have several clotting factors of the coagulation pathway which are produced in the zymogen forms. There are few examples, factor 2, factor 3, factor 5, etc. Say these clotting factors are synthesized at different sites, they are released into the blood, they circulate in the blood as zymogens and they get activated only when there is stimulation. For example, if there is tissue injury, we want the blood to clot so that there is no blood loss. So at that time, these zymogens get activated. We also have members of the fibrinol fibrinolytic system which act as zymogens. For example, plasminogen, it has a role in clot lysis. So that is also circulating in the blood as zymogens. We have some more examples for zymogens. It includes prolipase. This is again a pancreatic enzyme which is getting activated only in the duodenum. We have angiotensinogen. It is a member of renin angiotensin system that is involved in controlling blood pressure and fluid balance. That's also synthesized and it gets circulated as zymogen. We have procaspase which is an enzyme of apoptosis that is also present as zymogen. We also have some members of the complement system which is involved in providing immunity to the body. They are also produced as zymogens. Now let's see what happens to the structure of zymogens as they get activated to their active form. So when zymogens get activated, we know it undergoes irreversible structural change. So that involves hydrolysis of peptide bonds which results in release of short peptides also change in the overall three-dimensional structure of the molecule 
and that brings the active site of the enzyme on its surface making the product or the active enzyme really active. So now let us see how zymogen activation happens taking conversion of trypsinogen to trypsin as an example. So let us uh, draw the organ which produces this zymogen trypsinogen. This is pancreas where pancreatic zymogens are produced that includes trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, proelastase, carboxypeptidase A, carboxypeptidase B. They are all produced in the pancreatic SNR cells. So they are synthesized and stored in pancreas as zymogen forms. Once the chyme enters the duodenum, this is duodenum. Once the food enters as chyme, chyme into the duodenum, these zymogens are released into the duodenum. On the surface of the mucosal cells here, we have an enzyme called enteropeptidase. So once the zymogens reach the duodenum, the lumen of the duodenum, Enteropeptidase activates all these zymogens directly or indirectly. Let us see how the activation happens. So, trypsinogen is now in the lumen of the duodenum. So, it comes across its activator that is enteropeptidase. During the activation process, there is release of hexapeptide. So, a peptide bond in trypsinogen is broken down releasing a hexapeptide from the end terminal end. So, during this process trypsinogen is converted to trypsin which is the active form. Now, few molecules of trypsin that is produced can activate remaining molecules of trypsinogen to trypsin. This process is known as autocatalysis. So, in the lumen of the intestine, now we have trypsin which is active. This trypsin is now responsible for converting remaining pancreatic zymogens to their active form. So, which are the remaining ones? Chymotrypsinogen. Proelastase, procarboxypeptidase A and B, they are converted to their active forms. So, trypsin is now responsible for converting all these zymogens to their active form. Okay. So, now let us move on to the question why some enzyme enzymes are produced in zymogen forms. 
Now let us consider zymogens of the GI tract. If these zymogens are produced and stored in active form, they can damage the organ by chewing away the cellular proteins. So, it is only wise to store them in inactive form. So, they get activated in the lumen of the intestine in presence of food, thereby facilitating its action on the food. So, now we have enzymes of coagulation pathway, zymogens of coagulation pathway. So, if they are circulated in the active form, this are, will be responsible for producing clots. They activate the coagulation pathway and they act, uh, produce clots. So, this production of clot is very damaging to the system whenever it is unnecessary. So, let us see, do we have any conditions which is associated with premature activation of zymogens? So, I will be listing out two conditions. There is a condition called acute pancreatitis where pancreatic zymogens get prematurely activated and we have a condition called hypercoagulable state associated with different cancers where there is clot formations whenever it is not necessary. So, let us touch upon these two conditions. So, acute pancreatitis, the patient with acute pancreatitis presents himself with upper abdominal pain, fever, vomiting and all these symptoms increase on food intake. So, sudden inflammation of the pancreas is responsible for this condition and in severe cases it can lead to even necrosis of pancreas. So, what happens here is trypsinogen gets activated to trypsin in the SNR cells itself. There is premature activation of trypsinogen in the pancreas. So, these uh, now trypsin molecules will also activate other zymogens and all these active enzymes will start acting on the cellular proteins thereby damaging the pancreas. And these zymogens as well as the active enzymes from pancreas are released into the blood they circulate and they reach different organs like lungs causing its damage. So, now we have one more condition associated with premature activation of zymogens. So, many uh, types of cancer are associated with hypercoagulable state or there is a condition called migratory thrombophlebitis or Trossier syndrome. What happens here is there is clot formation in the superficial vessels and these clots they appear at different places at different time. So, that is known as migratory thrombophlebitis. So, what is happening here? So, the cancerous tissues are able to release certain tissue factors which are activating the extrinsic pathway of blood coagulation. So, thereby they cause clot formation. So, that is about the zymogens. So, we have learnt about zymogens under these headings. I have defined zymogens and I have given some examples for zymogens and we also learnt about activation of zymogen taking trypsinogen to trypsin as an example. Then we also learnt about purpose of keeping these enzymes in the zymogen form and also two disorders associated with premature and inappropriate activation of zymogens. Thank you.